I think you're uh, just about ready for breaking up, i got to say. I don't know, it costs too much. Flooded. Flooded. <laughs> Welcome along to this episode of Adventures of an Old Sea Dog. We pick up the story, I'm in Port Bundaberg Marina. Even though I wasn't in the water, the weather hadn't been good and the night before it had rained really heavily. Brand new cover. Let me get this out. I am still finding stuff from last night's debacle with the rainstorm. Flooded. Flooded. I mean, seriously flooded. I mean, flooded, flooded. And I think that one might be as well. I am the only person I know who can flood their bilge while the boat is out of water. That's like... Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on. I've got other things to do with my life. The plan was to be in this yard for the next few weeks while I refitted Shaddy ready for her next part of the voyage. So as this was going to be my home for a while, I decided I wanted to take a look around. Sometimes you can find some really interesting stuff in a boatyard. I'm going to go and check on Rick's boat after the blow last night. I'm sure it'll be fine, but just put eyes on it. So if he contacts me, I can tell him I've looked at his boat. Mascanada. That's Mascanada. Looks okay. He's got a lot of cloth up there, a lot of windage, but she seems to be fine. This boat and its owner, Rick, and I sailed together for quite some time in New Zealand. Next door, I'm sure I've seen this boat somewhere before. I love this full keel on it. You either like them or you don't. Liberators are West Sail 32, and though I didn't know it then, that boat was going to play a big part in my life in the next few weeks. I can see the, I can see the point in this. This is basically a house. Yeah, I could live here. Normally locked up in here. It's open during the day. So I checked on Rick's boat. I'm, I'm going to have a look at another boat around the corner around here. This is a nice hard chine steel boat. Bit big for me, but it's nice. Catch. But next to it is this unloved monster. Wasn't quite sure what I was looking at here. I thought at first it was a plastic boat. Then I saw the way that this had all been put on. But the telltale sign is when you come to the rudder. So, sweetheart, you're a steely. Uh -huh. I think you're uh, just about ready for breaking up, I gotta say. I think this has been neglected. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't think it's, I, it would cost too much. The cost to bring this boat back uh, would be humongous. There's so much wrong with it. It's basically a giveaway. Just fixing that would be a pain. And you can see there, you don't need me to tell you. Look at those bubbles up there. I can see there um, around the porthole, you can see all the bubbles and you can see that the hull is lifted to skin the paint and filler, what have you, to the next one. I reckon that, that entire section is about to rust out. It's incredibly sad. This must have been a beautiful boat. I feel sad. I feel absolutely physically sad for this boat. She's a beautiful thing. Someone neglected her so badly. I'm going to go back and start working on Shaddy. <laughs> Shaddy's like, you do the same to me. Not as bad as this. Next door was a fiberglass catch. This would do me nicely. I wasn't too sure on the name Hemmer. I would be tempted to put Royd at the end of that. Yeah. Found what could have been David Bowie's old boat. I was in heaven just walking around all these wonderful craft, just uh, enjoying the day. Then I found one that would really suit me. Uh, yeah, this. How about it? Yes. Just the job. Then. Definitely the weirdest boat in the lot. 
That's the biggest sailing boat I've ever seen that is powered by an outboard engine. <laughs> no way. From the ridiculous to something quite interesting, this is an example of the modern expedition yacht. She's aluminium or aluminum if you prefer, and she has a lifting keel. Bow thruster, now that's cheating. Portholes in the side of the boat, I'm not really in favor of that. I don't know if you can see that, but that's actually a swing heel. It's up at the moment uh, and it'll drop down to provide more stability for the yacht when at sea. Another unusual thing is it's got twin rudders. For me, the idea of having a short stubby keel or one that swings up is that you could beach the boat. Uh, which is something you, it, nice to do sometimes, but I think if you've got twin unprotected rudders You wouldn't want that to sit on the ground. That spoils it for me. They should have skegs on them a Skeg would run down the front here and be protection This is similar to a Halberg Rassi. I think it's a Nijad uh, This is sort of the thing that I should have bought in the first place It's got a three-quarter keel and it has a skeg on the rudder Although I would prefer that skeg to come down below the rudder as protection because you can get ropes caught in this bit and that's a major problem these days with crazy fishermen on this boat it has another three-quarter keel but a different idea it's quite shallow it has a bulb at the bottom to make it uh, a shallower draft but what I do like is that and they they might have actually even added this on the, the back here this is what I would do my next boat you've got protection in case you get ropes sliding under the boat they can't get to the rudder this is an example of a boat with a long, unprotected rudder. I don't like this. It's very vulnerable to fishing lines, fishing nets and orcas. If you can imagine a rope or something getting caught underneath the keel, it can't do any damage. It can't get up to the propeller. The propeller is above that little skeg there and it'll run all the way to the back and off and out and do no harm. I wonder if she's for sale. She does look a bit unloved from San Diego, I believe. I like that boat, but I still think this boat is the best and the one I love. On the way to the shops to get some supplies. Morning. Just over a week ago, I had a really bad rainstorm and lots of wind and I left that porthole slightly open and it drenched a lot of things. And uh, I was just doing some stuff in the boat, decided to open up down the sides here and it's full of water. This is just, I just keep finding more damage. All this stuff in there, it's gonna come out and be cleaned and repainted now. It's another job that's not even on the list. This is the last canister I have with the uh, fresh spring water in it. Uh, look, hey, the water will be okay, but it looks just horrible. And I can't put it down, especially on the new floor. The gift that just keeps on giving. Nobody else had any problems, just me. So the lesson is, of course, whenever there's bad weather, check the portholes, check the hatches, anything that opens up into the boat, then you'll avoid things like this. So to cheer myself up, the sun was shining, decided to go and check out my friends at Bundaberg Volunteer Marine Rescue. They were hosting a marine bring and buy sale. A nice day out. It's Monday and I've got the maintenance book out, lots of lists of things to get through. Going to drop the anchor in the car park. A bit busy down there. Ah, just mind yourself, mate. <laughs> First time I actually have to say to someone, careful, I'm dropping an anchor and he's in a car park. <laughs> All right.
I need to do some work in the chain locker so there's a lot of chain in there that needs to be out there. Because I'm not charging the windless battery, I'm gonna do it manually. There's a bit of chain here that's no doubt been on the bottom. It looks completely different. Uh, I might actually turn it around, that's what they do. You turn the whole chain around because there's 20 meters here that have never been in the sea. It's there, turn. Nearly there. While we're in the anchor locker, I wanted to show you this. It's a cutaway link, or it's at least it's the end of the chain, and it's made of rope, and you can cut it away. The idea being, if there's an emergency, and I've actually been around when things like this have happened to other people, uh, and you need to get, you can't get the anchor up, you need to move the boat out of a, a dangerous area, you've got to get rid of the chain. Anchor, just say goodbye to it. But if it's under load, getting the anchor chain off or uh, disconnected from the boat is a problem. So what you do is you have a, a last link, which is made of something you can cut free, like a piece of rope. But I was always kind of worried about that. So what I thought of is like the very end, you don't attach it to the very end of the chain, you attach it just a few links from the very end. So you have something like that, which is your your hard. So if it accidentally let the chain out, it, it's got a double stop there. For security but if you need to get the chain off in an emergency no that's not under load that's the one that's going to be under load because that's the last link that goes out so you can still take that off that's your last emergency thing you can take that off now you can cut that and the uh, the chain is free to leave the boat in this case i'm not cutting it i might make a slightly better arrangement of this but i decided to take the chain right out of the boat because i've got so much work to do in here it'll be better if it's just clear and out of the way you can see the rust a lot of this is staining. It's not as bad as I thought it was. Um, but um, I'm going to remove the stains and I'll find out where the rust is. Okay, there you go. Hello. Okay, time for work. From the front of the boat to the back. These latches have caused me several problems over the years, namely cutting the back of my legs as they stick out. Another thing to cause me injury is this. It's one of the mounting points for the Main Street Traveller. As I don't use that anymore, these have got to come off. That particular one, this here, has cut my foot badly in the past. So... <laughs> Had to replace that. One of my least favorite skills of all is plumbing. I, I just seem to find it very hard. But bought this nice new shiny thing. Let's see how it goes. Okay, looking good. When I've cleaned the sink, uh, it'll be looking better. That's supposed to come out. It doesn't come out very well. But anyway, um, got to turn the water on yet. There's always a little piece left. There's always a piece left, isn't there? When you, you think, where does that go? I actually do know where that goes. Right, the important bits are underneath. I've got to have a look down there before I turn the water on. Plumbing is not my favorite thing. Uh, it just seems to be overcomplicated. I mean, to put all this together, I had to use a spanner that size. <laughs> just, I mean, it's like nuts. Why do they make it so complicated? Don't know. Right, let's see if it leaks. Okay, this is the water pressure switch which i've taped up so i didn't use it accidentally here goes oh it's pressurizing now nothing yet wow i expected it to leak that's nice i could actually invite ladies around and would you like to freshen up my dear oh yes i do like your tap it's so lovely there you go so that's a faucet in america isn't it hey that's, I just, I'm just going to stand here and look at that all day. Can't believe I've done that. Brilliant. What I've been waiting for, my rust killer has arrived. There's rather a lot of it. Yeah, this is phosphoric acid. It kills rust. That's it there, an 85% solution of phosphoric acid. 
People say this or that works, uh, talking of rust killers, but that's the active ingredient in all rust killers. So you just buy that stuff. Originally the cabin sole, that's the floor to you landlubbers, uh, had a carpet on it, close of um, pile carpet, which, which held the dirt and was getting very old and very messy. I took it out and just scraped it all off the, uh, the boards underneath the floor. And it left this sort of glue thing here, which uh, you can probably just see. Uh, and the uh, residue of the carpet as well, like there. Um, so once cleaned off, it looks like that, which took a heck of a lot of doing. And then a protective coating of varnish. And that's going to be the new floor finish. Beginning to look quite nice. I'm enjoying doing this. For once, I'm actually improving things and not just fixing them. This is part of what remains of the old depth sander. Here's the new one which has got to go in. That's actually what it looks like when it's in one piece. Uh, this bit is that bit there. But as you can see, this on the end means that it can't be drawn out that way out of the boat. It has to be fitted from the outside of the boat. Kind of odd really, that's the stem of it. But the actual uh, echo sounder sender is underneath there. This is like a bell housing, which is all part of the boat. Uh, so I'm going to have to get it out from the bottom of the boat. It is blowing a bit of a hoolie out here today. Uh, they've actually put some anchor points in the ground for a catamaran over there because it was moving around too much. Not sure just how many knots, but uh, we're moving a bit. It's a little bit right here. But uh, anyway, just get on with the work. So this is what I'm talking about. I think that's the bottom of the uh, echo sound ascender right there. And this has been built up out of filler to make it more sort of water dynamic, if you will. So I've got to cut that out and then drop this out the bottom. Resealing it is going to, I'm going to have to rebuild a lot of this. Yeah, that's the bell housing. It's full of gook. So the new one has to slip in from the outside and then this is all going to be built back again. All the time I was working away, the weather was deteriorating. It was hot and it was humid. Replaying this last scene uh, that I just had on a few moments ago to show you this. This is the ground uh, that I was working on. It was very dirty. Uh, silty in fact and harboring as it turned out a lot of bacteria this is a still of my foot this was the last time it was ever going to look like that the full story in the next episode meantime i'd love it if you'd go across and check out my new channel barry sea dog parents that's where i keep my music including the new single halfway thank you so much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it Many thanks also to my wonderful patrons for their incredible support. Thank you so, so much. For real-time updates, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter X. Until next time, stay well, be good, be safe. You heard of the runaway train. I don't want a runaway train. Chain. It takes about ten takes for the game.